I'd like to call the meeting to order at 6.01 p.m. Um, I actually have a couple amendments to the agenda. Sorry. Uh, we need to do the um, SU report out that didn't get onto the agenda again. Um, and I will send a message to Taylor about getting it on there. Um, and we also need to, I would like to just, we have board seats that are up for re-election next year that's going to be happening on the 18th and I want to have a bit of a conversation about doing that and also getting the word out for the meeting. Um, just hearing from everybody as to what would make mo the most sense for their individual towns and how we want to let people know that there are seats up if there are seats up or if everybody's just running again or whatever. So, um, those are my my amendments. Does anybody else have any other is amendments? There's something on there about scheduling a second, like figuring out when our second meeting is going to be. No, but I figured we should talk about that during number 5.2, the possible future district configuration okay. models, because I don't know. I kind of want to check the time there and sort of see. I had sort of thought that was going to happen the next meeting in February, mm. but let's just talk about it when we get there. And yes, we can set a time for that okay. at that point, if that works. Any other agenda amendments? Okay. Um, let's see. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of both January 7th and January 16th? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Any comments? Anything? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of approving both the minutes of January 7th and the minutes of January 16th signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries. Public comment. Is there any public comment? Lots of public? Okay. Yes. Okay. Have, um, there's a group of us here. We are um, seeking permission from um, the Union School Board to um, place a uh, dock in our, in the town school wetland in Woodbury um, and I thought I'd just give briefly give you a, a history of the project it's been ongoing um, formally now for about three years so initially um, the Woodbury School District the Conservation Commission the friends of the Woodbury School that Elizabeth is a part of um, have been working together um, to have a, a long kind of sought uh, dock secure dock in the wetland for the use of school children for different projects. Um, formerly we had a f kind of floating very rickety dock that was pretty precarious when you got a group of school children on it. Um, so this project has been um, in the works for at least three years um, and thought about for more than that. Um, and we just recently applied um, uh, sent a grant application in for the actual implementation. We've had a design done on it. Um, I believe the Woodbury Fund helped um, a, another town group help pay for the de full design of the project. And, and when we, um, when the select board was meeting to um, approve the application, um, we realized, oh, that piece of property is no longer part of the town. It belongs, it was part of the Woodbury School District um, with the merger and we weren't able to kind of transfer the property to the town of Woodbury because of some of the rules with the merger. So it really doesn't belong to Woodbury at this point in time. Um, so we realized we needed permission from the Union School District in order to have the stock put in place in the in the school town wetland. Um, that's that's what we call it. Um, it's always been sort of known as the town or the school wetland. Um, and you know, so at this point, um, we need permission to do that. And that's basically why why we're here tonight. Okay, can I clarify? It's not really a dock that projects out into the water. It goes horizontal with the, with a shoreline, so it's more of a study. Yeah. But right, oh, there it is. <laughs> so, how, what's, this, what's like the <laughs> circumference of space that it is gonna that it take? Do you know, like, and I'm trying to like try to figure out here. Oh, I no, I didn't take both of them. All right, I see. It's been des designed so that um, children can either lay on the dock or reach on the dock. There's an opening in the center also to the to the water there. It's, it's, it, 
is right tight to the shore. Um, I'm not sure exactly how far it goes out, but not, not real far. Feet. This is about 25 feet by about yeah. 30 feet. Yeah. So that children can take um, you know, water samples, okay. um, vegetative samples, and then there'll, there'll be a um, kind of a table study area on the shore um, by the dock, which, which isn't a part of that diagram, but that's kind of the general plan. And this was another space that was thought to enhance the after learning opportunities. We have the, um, the log circle that are in, in, our tr in our woods, and then there's an observation dock just on the edge of the wetlands, and this is another opportunity for students to explore. And community also is a really great place for wildlife recreation, birding, and um, that kind of thing also. I assume you guys looked at environmental impact and whatnot. Yeah, we, Elizabeth um, has researched all of the permitting or the rules for, yeah. So we already have, um, because we've been working on this so long, we, um, we have a document from environmental conservation that pretty much gives us the go-ahead to move on the project. Um, so we have pretty much everything in place that won't require a permit, actually, um, and Wetlands has come out and looked at it. Um, so we've covered all our bases. Yeah, thanks for asking. And the grant that you, so they um, they applied for a grant with, sort of Adam had asked me and I said go ahead and do it and Elizabeth had said, you know, if we don't give permission for this that they could just withdraw their application, but the application is already in for the grant. How much of the cost of this would the grant cover? All of it. All of it, okay. Mm -hmm. And whether we get this particular grant or not, um, the expectation of the steering committee, or at least as from me, one member of the steering committee, is that um, there would be no cost to the school district or the town. Okay. That's the goal, really. Okay. And so there's no match on this particular grant. Okay. How about safety-wise? I'm, I'm not familiar with the wetland, but like, if a public person went out and got hurt, fell in... I mean, you probably already have to address that. But well, if they fell in, they would be probably about a foot of water. Oh, okay. Um, like I said, so I've never been there. It's so not deep. And, Mostly muck. And okay. the dock is designed that there are helical posts that basically go down through the swamp, the wetland kind of muck, and mm -hmm. into a solid base. So this will be a very solid, well-built um, dock. <coughs> Um, so as part of this uh, particular grant, and probably would want maybe something in place regardless of it's, if it's approved, if you're all okay, is um, this grant does require either um, a landowner agreement before we get through the process. We haven't even heard if we made the first cut, um, or an easement. So if you approve it, the next step would probably be what kind of um, formal approval. Uh, would everyone be comfortable with and going through with that? But like I said, that's a while yet. That would be if we're selected in the second cut and if they're getting ready to award us the funds. That's still a little while off. If you do receive the grant, when might that be? And, and what's your sort of projected timeline for if, if, um, if you got the grant, how soon you could get the project underway? Uh, we're ready. So as soon as um, we're able to be um, on that spot, you know, because of wet springs, um, I would say if, if our contractor is ready, we can go ahead and start. Mm -hmm. So hopefully summer. What's summer? the timeline for the grant for hearing about that? Um, for hearing when we'll for, be awarded? Well, yeah, like you said that there's a couple... Uh, we'll find out this month if we make the first cut. Okay. Um, and then we'll be required to do a presentation for the selection committee. Okay. I believe that they hope to have sub grants in place in the April May ish time frame, if okay. I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um. So, does anyone else have any questions about this? I do we have to take a vote on approving this and you need to make a motion? Make a motion. So does anybody have any further questions for Elizabeth or for any of the members who came tonight? Okay. Is there a motion? Everybody understands what, like, 
the ownership of the land and all that kind of stuff. That was cool that. Can we make the motion, not yet knowing if it's going to be an easement or a landowner agreement, that we make it with that provision? Like we just say, under whatever, under, that they'll let us know what that... I mean, Both are we giving them permission to... Yeah, what are, we, what are we giving them permission you can, for? You can make a motion to, you know, approve their action uh -huh. um, and support their moving ahead to get the grant. You know, that doesn't commit you to anything else beyond... Once so if that would allow us to then decide later about the easement yeah. or the... Okay. I just thought of another question. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, what about like maintenance and longevity? Is this going to change anything as far as uh, like facilities the for town would take the on the their town. responsibility? Okay. Mm -hmm. So this would be something built on the land that the board owns, but the town would own the actual thing, the the dock. Is that? Um, that could be an arrangement. It would, I guess, it would depend on how you feel about that. And, okay. Um, okay. It might. I think it's more about access to the land and right. the infrastructure on it. Mm -hmm. um, and I should also mention that part of the grant is also that it has to be available to the public right. uh, over ten a ten year period. And I'm least. assuming with okay. So then I guess part of my question for that, and this is probably not something you can answer, but ten years is a pretty big chunk of time. So the public school building and the land surrounding it is public. So that's not a problem, but depending on if anything were to change with that, I don't know how that would affect. So and I don't know how we would do that. There are legal questions that I don't think Okay, okay, um, okay. And I guess it would help maybe if you, Elizabeth, have um, a copy of the grant that you could forward. Yes, absolutely. Um, and then if any of the board members come up with questions, you can forward them and I can compile them and submit uh, to our terms. Okay. So is there a motion that anyone wants to make? I move that we, I don't know what to say, accept this, or support, the support them to, to take action to grant. secure a grant for a um, boardwalk in a wetlands of Woodbury. <laughs> I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, well, thank you all for your thank efforts you. and your work. Is there any other public comment? Nope. All right, so we are now into the principal's incidental report. Questions? I have a comment. Um, well, two things actually. A request and a comment. Uh, I'm wondering about the language. I know we had started talking about using the language of instead of Lakeview Union School, Woodbury, we were going to call them campuses, right? Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's not reflected in that report. I mean, it's been a couple hours since I looked at it, so I might be wrong, but. I mean, I think it's a, it's a, I don't know. The well, I think it's, we'll talk about it. well, I think it's part of the, at least my understanding when we discussed it was it was supposed to help facilitate the universal feeling that we were all part of one community instead of the three separate schools. And so we were trying to make that more well, obvious just by the language, not just to help people start seeing us as one group instead of three separate Schools. They're mostly talking about, they usually, I mean, I'm just like, Yeah, I know. I like right it. now, but it's I like, I mean, Hardwick Elementary School was mentioned once, but everything is like Lakeview, Woodbury. Okay. Um, <coughs> uh, yeah, there's some H HES quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, there's HES. Which this is, I mean, that's kind of, I think that Hardwick is, has like Wolcott is known as, like Wolcott's W-E-S and Hardwick's H-E-S, and so it's really hard to, I guess if we're, I don't know. Can I, I ask, um, yeah. I, I, the discussion's going around a lot about that, and is it? and I'm not sure myself where, where we left it, because right. at one point it was, 
you know, get rid of school and then it would then say campus and it was like, well, we can use the school name that's under certain conditions but not others. So we're okay. I'm okay with whatever the board would like, whether it's school or campus, and, you know. But just reading it yeah. as a as a Greensboro person. Right. I see Harvard Elementary right. School. Right. It sounds like a separate you know, siloed It's a perception. Like that, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, and I think yeah. it's also, I think that maybe a conversation needs to be had within Hardwick about, because it's, you know, we have friends of HES, so it's like if we, if we decide that we're going to not call it Hardwick mm -hmm. Elementary School, not do HES, then how do we remain Well, same thing that? with like Lakeview, it's like yeah. the... Because, plus, because I can't remember, but something of Lakeview. Because technically the business office the Greensboro campus, and we had a conversation mm -hmm. about wanting to keep the Lakeview Lake as the yeah. part of the identity, so yep. we're referencing ourselves as Lakeview mm -hmm. at the Greensboro campus. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we talked about this um, with the whole acronym thing, like in, in on legal documents, like if we came up with a nickname for our district, that wouldn't necessarily be the official name, like the legal name. It could just be the what everybody calls it <laughs> mm -hmm. kind of thing. So it could still be HES um, and whatnot. But just when we're doing like stuff where we're interacting with the community and right. But that. But if we're. But I think that that becomes difficult if we're saying because we do say the HES is in here quite a few times, mm -hmm. and I think it's because that's. Cool. It's, I don't it's know just what it's called, yeah, right? Yeah, yep. So it's hard to know. Can we just say like Hardwick? We could say Hardwick <laughs> instead. Um, I mean, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, that. I mean, we, like, can, we can start trying to you know, trying to just call it Hardwick we, instead. I mean, they're, all, they're all schools. Um, hard to go make a school, I mean, but I understand that. Well, we talked like, about them being campuses as part of the school district. But it's not like part of a school district, but they're not like like for, I'm just thinking about for students like. For them to like, it is a school that they go to. You know, to think of like, wait, I don't know. Just it's not like usually campuses are part of a school name, right? Like, I think Sam's talking about. I mean, the audience of the incidental, you know, wouldn't be the kids necessarily. Mm -hmm. So right. maybe right. just for the purposes of unifying. Just to, to try to get people campus. to start thinking of us more as one group commodity instead of three separate. So we can just call it Hardwick, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, or, yeah, or just a suggestion. I don't know. It's like, no, I mean, I think it's valid. It's totally valid. It's just trying to figure out, like, how many different things, how many different <laughs> names does Patrick have to remember of, like, okay, well, I call it Hardwick here, here, and it's HES here. Hardwick Elementary Campus. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> um, Part of this, dude. Yeah. But I think, I, I, I think we can try to be more aware of the audience, and yeah. we can use school or campus, mm -hmm. especially when we're here together in this report, to, to, to try to refer more to campus would, okay. would make sense. So, yeah. so. Thank you. Yep. Thank, yeah, thank you. Um, and then my question, sorry, and then I'll okay. stop and other people will talk. <laughs> um, I'm wondering, is there a way we could include some behavioral information? I know from being part of Lakeview, we were so small, we had to be really careful mm -hmm. because you could identify pretty easily. But I'm just wondering about, there's a, from my perspective, there are uh, some kind of notions of, I don't know how to say it, <laughs> that certain, like Lakeview has a certain, um, demographic. Not demographic, but like that's the school that not, and I'm not going to, that school has all the bad kids, that school has all the good kids, that, and I'm just curious if there's data to back that up, or just if we could try to change the perception. Try to, yeah, just, yeah, okay. thank you. I, I didn't know how to say it no, diplomatically. You're fine. <laughs> you're fine. Um, in terms of like number of referrals or not, or like what just like what kind of data something we to have on our radar as just what? so it's quantitative rather than people saying oh that's like the school where that has so many behavior issues or yeah we could say school. well look if you look at Hardwick they have thirty five percent and so does Lakeview have thirty seven and so it's so well, not necessarily something in the incidental report but just an overall like a more of an overall because that's not going to change on a monthly basis mm -hmm. you, so just like an overall okay, I was going to suggest next month we're doing data anyway mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have that Lexia data we're going to yeah. have uh, data so mm -hmm. that might be a good time to just that throw it in a folder 
kind of like the percentages. Yeah, I, mean, I think the only thing I'll say is we've already had a discussion around the fact that we don't collect data in the same way. Right. Oh. And so to <laughs> and so <laughs> to combine it into one, mm -hmm. just just know that that might be challenging in what you get back, but we'll do our best to, so maybe to sort of... Yeah, what makes the most sense? Because obviously right. if there's data that makes it look like you know it's not, then don't give us that data. But some whatever it is that will will be the best representation of, I guess that information that that because I do th I think that's valid to test so we can because some of it you know we only are familiar with our schools that mm -hmm. we've been on boards for, so maybe it would be helpful for us to get to know the other schools in that in that respect as well. Can I just ask a clarifying question about you saying you don't report in the same way or collect in the same way? And that just makes me wonder if um, the three campuses are using the same PBIS model, and if it, like, if they're following it in the same way, and if people have had the same trainings or the same people are following the same sort of um, PBIS design. I just, I, I sort of assumed that was the case, but but maybe from what you're saying, I'm just sort of curious about that. Is that? I can I mean, answer that. Question. So we, we, yeah. we all follow PBIS and put a, a, among schools throughout the state, what is referred to as an office referral mm -hmm. is very different from school to school. And, right. Um, you know, some schools are like, you know, extreme events that, you know, only the principal can handle. That's an office referral. And other schools are more, well, if a kid, you know, a child needs support in some way throughout the day, we, we're going to call that an office referral. We refer to it in. And I think we are looking as a district at, you know, at how can we be more uniform in that. And for Hardwick in particular, we we like the data. So we want we want everything recorded. And, and so everything's been an office referral, which makes it difficult for us even internally to distinguish between, you know, kind of more um, garden variety, you know, a little Different bit of uh, support right. and the more extreme behaviors. And, and so we're looking internally at how to, how to separate those out. And, and so... Um, so therefore, depending upon what Lakeview and Woodbury do, it could look very different. And some schools that you see with, you know, oh look, we only have very few office referrals. It just means they didn't they didn't record it as an office referral. Right. Do they you they put it somewhere else into another book. And, and uh, so the more data you have, sometimes makes it look like you have more uh, issues going on at school, where it, it it can be just no, we're really good at making sure that we record everything that happens. And some are check-ins more than right. Referrals, right, exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. Can yeah. you use the tier system? The like, you know, we have this percentage of tier three yeah. or students tier. that access tier three, tier two, tier right. one. Would that make it more universal? It, it can. Um, it can also be subjective. I think that that's oh. the thing is it, it's subjective yeah. based on who's putting in the data. The data. Are they considering this a tier two behavior? Are they considering this? I think that's stuff we need to clean. Yeah, we and, need to and clean we, it up. And it's, we're it's an acknowledgement it. on our part yeah. that, yeah. that okay. really we need to clean it up all along because even with the Tier 2 interventions, the more we try to uh, support kids with Tier 2 interventions, <laughs> we'll give the appearance, oh, we have more kids that need it, but right. it's not necessarily the case. It's more we're really good and proactive about mm -hmm. responding. Right. So that's yeah. that's where it gets a little tricky and, and uh, I think with the data. The one more thing I would, would say about it is we're also somewhat confined by our data reporting system on how we can enter certain things into, we use PowerSchool. Yeah. Um, and that can also just impact the, the way data looks. But it's a very legitimate request yeah. and question yeah. that, okay. that we are We'll take that, and, and it's, it's consistent with what we're doing right now in terms of how can we get data that actually shows us how effective some of our uh, interventions are. Because right now, it's, it's hard to see that, given that the data for the readers we just talked the, about. The other option I might suggest, uh, just as an option, is um, for each school just to present data on their growth over time. So instead of comparing apples to oranges, um, look at growth in mm -hmm. each school. Regardless of the system, it's you know growth within the same system. I think that was the point I was going to make was, um, you know, I know you're trying to figure out how to frame it, but like maybe our goal isn't necessarily to see like how is it at this school versus that school. It's like goal number one is around social emotional learning and academic, right? So like and under the social emotional learning, how are we doing as a system to support student yeah. behaviors to de decrease, you know, and so, you know, increase positive. So I just, you know, just reframing well that a little bit, yes. I'm looking for this one of the day. It Goals is. and growth. Yeah. 
I ran out of the bullets. <laughs> Are there any other questions or comments? I just had a quick one about um, the um, shoot, where is it? A group of Hardwick Elementary teachers came together to form a literacy planning team to review expectations for universal literacy practices, and then it says Lakeview and Woodbury will be brought into the work. And I just sort of was wondering about that process and the fact that like a group already started at Hardwick and Lakeview and Woodbury are going to be sort of added in later. And that maybe I read it wrong, but it, it, it left me feeling a little bit like Woodbury and Hardwick were going to be, I mean, Woodbury and Lakeview were going to be sort of on board later rather than yeah, in the forming and of the I can the answer that board. some as well. I think it's more of a, um, a size issue. Yeah. You know, we have two teachers at every grade level, so across two grade levels, we might have four teachers that are kind of trying to figure out what do we do in second and third grade, for example, whereas Woodbury and Lakeview would have perhaps one teacher that would represent that. So, so our goal was initially, let's kind of figure out what are we currently doing across the grade levels here at Hardwick, and then bring in the other schools, what are they doing, so we can start you know, having some consistency across all the yeah. three campuses. I think it's sense. more of a size issue than anything. I guess my hope would be that the earlier in the process yeah. that Lakeview and Woodbury can yeah. jump on board so that it doesn't feel like a bunch of work has been sort of, groundwork's been laid and then those two schools get sort of tacked right. on no. later. Point taken, definitely. But, I, but I'm all for the yeah. work. I think it's, right. it's so It's great. also a logistics about um, we, um, like our, our faculty time that we have at the end of the day. Yeah. It's it can be um, cumbersome to get everyone together on a regular basis. So Absolutely. so a lot of this work is going to have to be done individually at the at the different campuses, and then we'll uh, bring it together. Yeah, that <laughs> so makes sense. There, so, totally. but it's a good point. We also have to be consistent with OSSU, yeah. and so Amy Massey as well, the curriculum uh, uh, coordinator here, is is involved in, with this. So to start. Yeah. So, Anything else? I've got a question about the leadership team coming together and uh, reviewing school-wide academic data. Yeah. Okay, we haven't seen any of that. I understand that we should get some sort of report by March. Yeah, the next board meeting we're going to bring you. The next board meeting, we're going to bring you SBAC data yep. in addition to okay. the Lexia data that was requested and then this behavioral data. The other thing you guys were discussing was the CIP. Now, based on what you said back in October, the CIP is the basis for your submission of a budget. Um, and seeing how it's the board who owns the budget, where is the board input into the CIP? Who owns the document and who maintains it? Yeah, so just to clarify, the CIP is the basis for submission of the CFP budget, so the Consolidated Federal <laughs> Programs, federal dollars, Title I, Title II, Title IV, that we get um, to support PD professional development for teachers, uh, struggling learners. So anything that we apply for under federal dollars needs to be backed up by um, approved items in our CIP. To get to your, your other point, um, schools, when they get their teams together, will be inviting stakeholders from all arenas, so there should be teachers on these school-based CIP teams, administrators, um, students ideally, board members, community members, and then we submit, we actually submit those names to the state. So as schools form their teams, you know, you should, and you could even ahead of time identify someone to serve on uh, the OSWIT team. But those teams should be forming uh, fairly soon, early spring. And actually, Amy's going to be talking to the leadership team about that on March um, 20th. No, no, February sorry, February 20th. February 20th. Yeah. So, who's the author of the document? The author of the document is uh, 
Well, there was a team that put these together. We're not scrapping the one we have and rebuilding something from scratch. We're actually taking a look at what we have and then uh, changing it as necessary. Um, the Colt or the Central Office Leadership Team has a meeting scheduled for tomorrow morning, weather permitting, um, for to look at the SU-wide CIP. So the SU, the Supervisory Union, submits a CIP off of which the school's CIPs are based. And um, we're taking the existing one, and we've already taken drafts home and examined them. I've made notes, Amy's made notes, and we're coming together tomorrow to look at data and identify um, any changes that need to be made based on progress we've made, any changes that need to be made based on shifts in focus. So for example, we, we now have a pretty strong social-emotional learning focus that is not necessarily representative, uh, representative of the most recent draft of the CIP, so that's a shift we'll probably make in the existing CIP, and that will, will trickle down to schools. Um, you read about the develop the adoption of developmental designs, K-12, and, and the principles incidental. I have it in my incidental. So that's something that <coughs> is really going to be driving this uh, idea of social-emotional learning, which is so essential to establishing a foundation upon which you can build, then build academic learning. When will the board be able to see the document? Uh, like I said, the representative of the board can um, you know, to work on the document. The, the document from last year is available. I believe it's in the board folder. I think we, we put them in there. I've seen it somewhere. I can't remember where, but I saw it. And this one was the one where there's a separate CIP for the three different campuses? And is there going to be one for the district now? So, uh, my understanding is um, I think the state will allow us to combine them. I believe. Oh, actually, uh, I got. I got contradictory information, yeah. so we're going to have to look into that. The state might request that there are three different CIPs yeah. for the three different... Because we, when we did this, uh, last time I did this... That makes uh, a lot of sense. <laughs> you must yeah. merge. So you must merge, but please keep your documents separate. You know, last Sorry. time I did this um, in the Rutland area, there were a couple of districts, Proctor was one, um, they were required to do separate CIPs for your school. So that's... That's the most recent information I got. But we'll check. And I think there'll be a lot of commonality because we're sharing a lot of the same right. initiatives and the right. same needs. So. I assume this is kind of like a living document. What's that? I, it's a living document. So yep. as you make changes, you're going to inform the board of those changes so they are aware of what what changes have Yeah, been you'll get a copy the of, the, of the revised document. Actually, another thing I just thought of, there's no reason why schools can't work on one district document and then we submit uh, the same seven. document. And right. I know districts yeah. currently yeah. do that. So that's an option. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Anything else for the principal's incidental? Phoebe, you got anything? No. no. Oh, okay. You looked at me with that smile and I was thinking maybe you got um, Okay. So moving on to the uh, superintendent's incidental report. Questions. I'm excited for the developmental designs. I have had some experience with it at the middle level, and it's a great program. So yes. Happy to see her moving forward in that. Yes, I, I've had some experience with it too. Um, we brought it to uh, several schools, again in the Rutland area, and um, really made a difference. Again, it's something that targets social emotional learning. And, uh, you know, the research shows that unless kids feel comfortable at school, have good relationships with their peers and with the adults in the school, um, you, you won't have, you won't be, they won't be able to learn unless, you know, that stuff, that foundation is laid. And um, there's more and more of a realization, I think, nationally that schools really need to work, do this work. The, the old attitude was, oh, that stuff is the, uh, the job of the families, you know. But, you know, we can say that and make an excuse and kids won't be served. So we really need to step up and, um, you know, address this issue. And, that's, and the that's nice thing about that is not, it's not just, just an extra thing. It also really builds nicely off of what you're doing yeah. in the classroom already in terms of collaboration. That's great. Well, 
Speaking of students served, and again, it's been a couple hours since I read these, but this is the one that you're going to implement PK through 6 or PK through 12. 12. 12. Um, so, and again, I apologize if I'm taking too much from my own personal <laughs> job. Um, so your PK students are all the ones with the universal pre-K. They're any mem like kids that live in this district but not necessarily at Craftsbury so, or Hardwick. So how are you going to serve those nope, kids? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I certainly appreciate your background. <laughs> uh, so realistically K-12, but mm -hmm. we have you know, kids that are in our, some of our pre-K uh, programs. So um, I think that's a, that's a question we want to answer. Do we want to trickle down our pre-K, at least the pre-K that we have some control over? Mm -hmm. Um, do we want to bring in our community partners and have a conversation? Um, but that's certainly a, a big piece of this. And I think the earlier you start this work, the better. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And then there were two points that I just would look, I mean, even if I just see like a document or something, I was interested in, you know, what the coalition, the community partners coalition, where that's at, what the mission yeah, is. You should come to our point. next meeting. You want to know what it is? Yeah. Oh, actually, she's I think she's trying to figure that out right now. So, you should, yeah, let us know when those meetings are happening. Um, the uh, yeah, sorry, what was your question? Just generally, it was what just it is? want to see you know where where things are at because it's really exciting. Yeah. I don't know. So, the latest, I think I uh, mentioned something in the report about it. The uh, steering committee met. Um, the the. Not the most recent, but the meeting before, the whole group met to sort of flesh out vision components and mission components. And then the steering committee put those pieces together in several um, several products. One was a model, a visual model um, of sort of the work. The other was a work plan. Um, and the other was a mission statement. And um, it's really all about equity, ensuring that all students have access to meaningful opportunities outside the school. And that's sort of the direction we're headed. You know, we're trying to break down the, the walls of the school, trying to involve the community. These are you know, the great thing about it is that these are community partners who want to participate. We don't have to go out and, and, and beat the streets and solicit interest. Um, so we're trying to take an intentional approach to that. We've actually invited community members, these partners, to our in-service on Friday, um, considering them really members of our learning and instructional community, not just outsiders. So really shifting the, the, uh, the philosophy and the attitude about who these people are, inviting them into our community and, and embedding them. Do we have a large number of students involved with them at this point? At this point, no, but uh, eventually we'd like to get some, we've talked about getting students on the team. Okay. The meetings have been taking place at Hazen, but we have um, a representative from Craftsbury there as well. Uh, we wrote a grant, which we got from the AOE, a mini grant, uh, which will fund uh, a spring course at Hazen, and um, it'll fund re uh, resources for Makerspace. And then if the model's successful, we hope to replicate that throughout the, the supervisor union. Um, so it's really, it's, it's really great work. In my mind, you know, it, it's the team that most represents what OSSC was about and what really attracted me to it when I, when I was looking at it. Um, I can add one. I was yeah. at, I went to one meeting. It's, yeah. it's more of a high school initiative and such, mm -hmm. but um, the meeting, the last meeting they had, and, um, about opportunities, there's, there's a lot of Hazen kids that come down here and that have an interest in education or human services, and they work in a lot of the classrooms. And um, so I just wanted to encourage them, and they're very, you know, to, to do more of that and formalize that as opportunities for kids as they look at their pathways up in high school. And um, you mentioned the maker space, and, and we're gonna, you know, we're having some hoping that some of the, uh, the high school kids getting training in maker space and 3D printing will be down to help our kids kind of get something set up within with an OSU. So, so I think having that connection with elementary would be great. Isn't there a makerspace in Greensboro mm -hmm. at the library, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, and Spark is kind of a make. They have a 3D printer and all that kind of stuff. But um, I'd love to have some board members here, so I'll make a note uh, to invite you. I just sort of did what somebody was your question? Have a question? Um, 
I need to go back to the principal's report for just a second. Okay, sir. Um, Luke's not here, mm -hmm. but a um, couple months back ago, he asked the schools to keep track of their uh, just the waste, so that we could see how much waste is being accumulated. When we talk about waste, we're talking about you know the leftover or the throwaway from the mills to see how much is being wasted or how much is how much is being eaten, how much is not being eaten. And along with that, in the case of Woodbury and Hardwood, some of that information should be flowing back to Valerie that, hey, this wasn't such a hit. Um, I've yet to see any of that in any of your uh, monthly reports since he requested that data. And I think that's something we're going to want to look at more closely coming towards the end of this school year, looking into next school year, maybe how to manage that better. And I think one of the things that will probably help is across the board menus mm. from all three schools. That's it. And then one last thing back to the <coughs> superintendent's report is <laughs> I would um, be interested in, and we don't have to get into the details, but to see like what, what the agreement is between Crossbury and Hazen now that there's a signed MOU with some fluid, flexible opportunities. So if we can see that at some point or something, that would be nice. Okay. <clears throat> I had a quick question about the Mentoring Advisory Committee, and um, I guess I wasn't really familiar with it, and I didn't know if, yeah. I just didn't know what it was. And are those um, mentors for teachers or mentors for students? I just wasn't really sure what it was, sure. so I wanted to know more about it. Yeah, so that's a, a mentor organization for, for teachers. So okay. each district um, or supervisor union has a uh, structure and a system set up to mentor new teachers who come. Oh, great. And, um, Amy's really done a great job this year of meeting with the uh, two coordinators and really asking some good reflective questions about the program, um, about teachers' attitudes toward the program, about feedback we've gotten, about collecting more feedback. And they're currently working on really revamping that and bringing it, bringing it, making it more current. That's good. Cool. Who makes those matches to principals, or or do you make matches on like who the new teachers who the new teachers get matched with? Yep. So that's uh, generally Amy in her position. That's something I used to do when I was in her position. And yeah. um, you want to make sure there's uh, good representation at each building, so that um, ideally you want to match new teachers up with people in their building because part of it is learning the culture of the building. As you know, every building has a different culture, different norms. Um, and often it's, uh, you know, if it's a high school teacher, if they're an English teacher, you probably want to match them up with another English teacher because content is important. Mm -hmm. Good. That, that answers it. Okay, anything more on the superintendent's incidental report? Okay, uh, I'm going to throw the SU board report out in here. Does that sound good? Um, so we met and... <coughs> Uh, I think one of the first things that was of note is that uh, there was extensive discussion about the um, upcoming discussion we're going to have about the um, building utilization, I'm not sure what are we calling it right now, um, models. district configuration models. And Amy specifically uh, sort of Amy. asked, Amy Rosenthal okay. specifically asked, uh, you know, what, what do we as a board need from the larger OSSU board? Um, so while there wasn't a lot, like I think I said that, like I, she said, you know, I'm happy to come to the meeting just as, and I said I thought that might be helpful just to have, um, you know, eyes that were not on the board there. But I think it was also important to communicate to everybody here that they were, as a 
you know, as a larger board, they were interested in helping if there was a way we felt would be helpful. Um, so we talked a bit about that. Um, we talked about reaching out to the communities and different ways to brainstorm about that. Um, let's see, we did the incidental reports. Um, and we also approved a suicide prevention policy, um, which is very much a policy, but we also talked a lot about the social emotional well-being aspect and how important that part is. Did we approve um, policy? We did approve that policy. Oh, I'm pretty sure yeah. we did. No, it was a discussion. We had it on the action agenda for next meeting. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Um, we also talked a lot about the equity. We had an equity team discussion. Um, and I, I, I kind of, my feeling from it, and, and please, Kim or Rose, correct me if you want to say something different, but um, I think that it was sort of clarified that the equity, the grant we got for the equity team is about professional development, and there was a lot of expression that the culture within the schools needs to sort of change to reflect the professional development we're trying to provide as well because that will also help to change the sort of dynamic within the schools. Um, but I, was there anything else that you felt like was important to tell them about? Uh, I think it was just one thing I just thought was really great was that the board was really enthusiastic to help uh, our board with discussing yes. um, the the future of, of our campuses and, and what those might look like and any way that they could be supportive. And some of the feedback that people offered was really helpful, I thought, mm -hmm. in terms of um, multiple ways of getting the community involved, not just having evening meetings, but mm -hmm. having other forums and other ways for the community to give feedback um, other times of day or other methods of collecting community feedback. Um, so that it's not just the people who are able to show up for a few evening meetings who get to have a voice in what the elementary district will look like. I thought that was really helpful. They were sort of offering some different models mm. yeah. for that. I agree. And it was very nice to feel supported. Yeah, yeah. they were very supportive and, and offering good, good ideas, yeah. I think. So that was that. Um, and if no one has any questions about that, we should move on to the school choice procedure. Um, I, off the bat, will ask a question about this because I thought everything looked fine on it, unless I missed something egregious. However, the very last bulletin really kind of worried me, which just says that once the school choice application has been approved, the student's obligated to attend the school of choice for the duration of the school year. Once the year is over, the student may return to the school in the town in which they may reside without undergoing the application process. And that worried me because then how are we going to know, with the exception of the first day of school, if a student just shows back up at their hometown school? And I don't how, remember that being. And that was definitely not. Was no, not our, when we did the initial thing, it was when you move, that's it. You're there unless you reapply to change schools again. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure if this was copied from a different policy or, and I didn't, I did not do due diligence to go back and look at our old policy, but I wasn't really sure where that came from. And I, that worries me in terms of. So I put the policy at the top. Are you referring to the procedure? I'm, to, I'm referring the to the procedure. Yeah, yeah, so that's procedure. changeable. And it was, yeah, was that you needed to stay not only that school year, but it was encouraged that you stay through sixth grade. You at stay that. through sixth grade expected. at the end. Yeah, it was, that was the expectation. Yeah. So that there wasn't a lot of like, I want to do second grade at this school, but then third grade at this school, like the teacher over here, mm -hmm. that students would not hop around to different schools to sort of spend a year at each place where they liked the match with that teacher. I think that was the hope that yeah, people that would... Sense. It, obviously um, you can't I make somebody right stay in the school. I, I don't. I, um, yeah, I don't. I, I, I think an argument could be made as well that um, you know providing more opportunities for kids would allow for more flexibility that you're not, we're not going to put you in a building 
in a school, and if it's not working for you, we're going to say, well, I'm sorry, our procedure says that. So I don't think that, there, you know, I don't have so. a problem with children moving. Right. I have a problem with them not having to go through the process again right. because I don't see how we're going to know if yeah, we right. end that's, up that's needing to move yep, a absolutely. teacher. So I don't necessarily feel that we need to say, okay, if you move from this school to school A to school B, then you have to stay at school B forever. Right. Yeah. But right. I do feel like if you're going to move from school B wherever, you do still need to apply even if you're going back to your hometown school just right. so that we mm -hmm. have yeah. a really clear idea of this many children are going to be in this grade right. each right. year. When you when you mentioned it earlier, I was just imagining what August 25th That might be kind of scary. Like, <laughs> right. you know, where are you? Oh, we decided to oh, come back. Right. Or we're not here yet. So right. if I change um, it to once so the year is over, the student may reapply. We, we initially drafted the policy. Hold on right. a second. Hold on He's a second. I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Sorry. Can you wait for a second and we can finish this one part? Unless it runs counter to this. No, go, go okay, ahead. Go ahead. And can um, we put in something about the expectation is that the child will stay? Well, I'm trying to figure out where that was from. It was. I remember it was, talking I know. About we it. talked about it. I feel like it was last year somewhere. Let me but go back and... Somewhere, you know, the expectation is that the, the child would stay in school B for up through sixth grade. However, if they want to go to a different school, they are able to through the same processes, you know, I, you guys can work with it, but. Well, and I feel like the, f the policy that was sent out last year. The one we approved, was I'm pretty sure had that in there. What said that. It did. It did. But where to find it. Yeah, that's always the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at intra-district choice, if it'll actually let me open the folder. I think that also gives parents who are thinking about where they want their child like they it hopefully helps them to pause and really make this a conscious decision just not I don't like that teacher so we're gonna go over here and mm -hmm. you know just to recognize that it, it is a yeah it is a pretty big deal Did you find um, it June or policy? Yeah. I know, but it won't let me procedures. open. It won't oh. even let me open this right yeah. now. Um, you, can you get in there? I can't. It won't let me go in. So <laughs> it's in. It's under our main folder thing, and it's intra district choice. But it won't let me open the folder right now. You're looking for the policy? Mm-hmm. Because I, I think I pasted that verbatim at the top of this procedure. So then, where would the? Would it? Where would the? Would it have been on the application form? <coughs> Could it have been? I'm not seeing it in the procedure. Here we go. Or frequently asked what My, it's, it's totally not working. Um, my, this one says in frequently asked questions, elementary choice in the Orleans Southwest Supervisor, blah, blah, blah. And it has like a bunch of numbered points, and one of the numbered points is Three, will my child be able to attend the school of choice for all event elementary years? Your child is expected to attend the school of choice through sixth grade. Can we, but and then, is, then what's and the next then, one down? Can we return to our original school after a year or more? A school choice application implies a commitment from the students and the parent. Once a parent has submitted the choice application and been approved for entrance to the choice school, the student is expected to attend and complete their elementary education to the highest grade offered in that school. A spot is not guaranteed in the school of origins should a student wish to return. Okay. A parent must reapply to the school of origin through the school choice process outlined above. So, Okay, so that's the language you want. That's mm -hmm. the language yeah. that we Can want. You cut and paste that into an email and forward it to me. And sure. Yeah, so that's just question, whatever that question is. Do you want me to cut and paste it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the language that you want and all the language. Oh, or if you have the... Do you I have, have the, the document. I can just yeah, sure. share it. <laughs> See if that works. Is I know that actually the first deadline is kind of coming up in March for this. Um, will there be information sent home again that this is something that families can choose to do? So like it's being sent home this week. Stuff's being sent home this week. How are you guys accessing? I asked Adam this already. I have I have parents of your incoming students that are wondering about it. 
and Adam just told me to refer them to one of the elementary schools, but are you going to send something out to those parents to make them aware that to it's the, an option? To the incoming yeah. kindergarten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be, that'd, that's we a can. good point. Yeah, we'll have to. It yeah. would be nice. Right, oh, definitely. <laughs> to yeah. let them know. What is the language and the information that goes home to parents? Is it just like here? How does it it's sound? The, it's what the application it? that we had sent out um, this past year for, yeah. the, for this current year. Um, with you know the dates change and all that in terms of the, the school choice and we also included I believe some language around the procedure and the, and the process here. We also so. just said that it was optional that, that right. if they didn't want to make a change then they, they can stay put really where they are. Submit that form. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm sorry. A community yeah. member came up to us, just, I just remember this, a community member came up to me and um, suggested a sort of a like a brochure that would go out with this that would highlight the, the things happening at each of the schools to sort of showcase some of the good and individual kind of things that are being done at the three schools so that if you are kind of taking a look like you take that home and you look at this brochure and go oh I didn't realize they're doing this at this school or oh mm -hmm. they're doing that to sort of highlight those things would that be yeah, possible? It. I mean Hardwick sure. did that I don't know if Woodbarian did that hasn't been part of. Maybe it was the, somebody saying that we didn't have that. At well, right, and I mean that was something that I feel like last year, it just didn't happen at Lakeview and Woodbury, and it happened at Hardwick, and I don't know if that was because of the principals, the, all that whole thing. Um, but I do feel like it would be great if it would, if Woodbury and Lakeview wanted to do that. I don't know how realistic it is to ask that of the principals. I'll just or put that out there. Can you I mean, nominate a, a, a tough staff time member? Right. Because things are up in the air. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it just—it would be nice. I know just from my own anecdotal, when I say to a parent, it's time to start thinking about kindergarten registration. Well, we're thinking about going to Woodbury, but maybe not because it's so small. And we, you know. I know I'm hesitant to say anything to anyone because, you know, the board's coming up with ideas for mm -hmm. configurations the principals have. And but that's not decision. for next year, right? We have another yeah, year. but it's gonna but it's mm -hmm. gonna impact parents' decisions about where they send their kids for if they're if they're trying to make a choice about. I mean, we can't we can't we can't imagine that a parent is going to send their child to a school mm -hmm. if it looks like we're going to make a different decision about that school for the following year because that's a lot of moving around mm -hmm. for a kid. At right. the same time, I feel like there's great things happening at. at, at of each of the three schools mm -hmm. and to, to miss out on not highlighting those things that are happening and for their kid to have the potential to s to partake in those things I just feel like we would miss out on somebody making that choice for mm -hmm. especially it's I'm thinking Lakeview because there's I'm still hearing a lot in that community about well the school's gonna close in a year or two anyway so I'm just gonna send my kid you know they're trying to jump ahead of that what they think is going to happen, and it, it, just me saying, no, it's not, doesn't, you know. <laughs> right. I'd like, to, I'd like to get rid of that concept, preconcept, conceived um, notion. Just a public comment. Woodbury, the people in Woodbury say the same thing about the mm -hmm. Woodbury School. Do they really? It, no, it's just going to close in a year or two anyway, so, oh. so that's kind of, yeah. that's yeah. what I hear as a select board member. And, and if we if we hold back on promoting those two schools, then we're perpetuating that idea of like, well, you wouldn't you wouldn't want to make this leap because things are up in the air. Mm -hmm. Then it it perpetuates that sense. And if you're just presenting what's happening good at one school, then the perception could also be that there's not much happening at the other two schools. How can we hear how can we hear about Hardwick schools, but we don't hear about Lakeview or Woodbury? It seems kind of uneven or unfair in a way. Um, so it was requested of the principal of the th mm -hmm. all three principals okay. last year to do this and it just didn't happen mm -hmm. at the at the other two schools. So both, it's was that because both principals were leaving at I, that I time? didn't you know, yeah. I wasn't in the position to uh, we weren't merged at the time, so I didn't I didn't really come down and say like why didn't you guys do this kind of thing? Because <laughs> it wasn't my directive but it was something that when we were well, going through merging, it was, you know, I think we were sort of talking about it. In communication with Craig, I put together um, just like a one-pager for our town report because our town clerk was asking about that, and it's literally just 
It's the happenings at Woodbury. What have Woodbury students been up to this year? And there's some pictures in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that could be something that I maybe mean, we can look more closely at it. But you know, it's just about what are some of the things that happen at each of these different campuses. Mm -hmm. And a I lot don't of think it it's comes a bad idea, like principal reports, or right? Like and that. I don't think it's a bad idea. I just, I just, I feel, uh, I feel sensitive to what we're asking of the principals and and how how realistic it is to because the choice things are going out this week. I, I get that. I'm also thinking like we're this is part of our community outreach, reach, right. communicating with the public that you think this is what's going to happen in one or two years, but... Well, but we can't actually the say because we haven't made decisions. No, decisions but we can, yet either. You know, we can give them factual information that might... Yes, we can. I mean... Oh, yeah. Is there? Yes. Could I speak? Is it, I mean, after you get done, I have a, just a little bit of feedback. Because I go on the, the, um, the websites a lot, and I'm very confused by them. And I think that that's a very good place to put reports about the superintendent, uh, reports about the, from the principals, pictures from the teach. I mean, it, it is your, it could be a lifeline. It could be the beginning of an intro to a parent. Yes, please go on our website, the O-S-S-U-E-D, or, and here you are. You know, this, it seems to me we have done a terrible job, terrible job of communicating with us. You know, I mean, I was in your place, now I'm in this place, I try to find out what's going on. Uh, it is, it is not working. So to tr think up a brochure at the last minute, which is helpful, but to really robustly build this, this community, we need a better communication. I mean, I don't know how. Yeah, and I'll, I'll speak to that, and I, I totally agree with you, and that's why we put into the budget, you know, money for a, a webmaster. We really don't have the personnel at this point, the capacity to maintain those sites, but it's essential that we do. Yeah. I know. But I do think, you know, for putting information out to families about, like, here are, you do have some choice. We have another year within this current configuration. It, most parents don't really know, I mean, don't know anything about the other school. Mm -hmm. So why would they even, What what is this choice really for them? Like, what does that mean? So. I just think it would be really nice if we could get something out. And, you know, if Hardwick was the only campus that was able to do that last year, you know, I don't know, I just think if there's this opportunity to put something together for this round, I mean, it's... And it's tough because we, you know, kind of end up, ended up putting the cart before the horse, but that was, you know, under the duress of the, the state, but um, we were forced to merge and, and offer choice without really having fleshed out the details of what those options consist of. I think that's why we're in a tough situation. Does make me um, worry about the equity piece. I mean, in hindsight, right. we should have spent the last year working on beefing up communication for the, the other two schools that don't have those brochures. I'm a little confused about, like, what is... I, I just, I don't think a bro brochure is that hard to put together. I'm not sure if the part that's holding us back is that, like, the difficulty in gathering the information to put on the brochure or actually, like, getting it to the printers or what would go on it. I guess I'm just a little bit confused about, like, I know the timeline is short, but I'm just not quite sure what what the specific barriers are and how we could get around those barriers. I'd say capacity, yeah, personnel. Mm -hmm. And the person who put together the Hardwick brochure is, I mean, has a template. Is that person available? Yeah, well, that's a, a collaborative effort effort with the staff last year, and we're, we're revising it this year, so um, we'll kind of put a new one out this year. But it doesn't need to be a brochure format. It can be any any format. I think, you know. I guess I was just wondering if, since we're sort of a one district, could that Hardwick person who has that template share it with, Justine and Craig and say here's what we've got you fill in your stuff from your school um, and ask teachers to give some input um, on what they would see were the highlights from their school and I mean, it may not be perfect <laughs> but to get it out there. And can we push that March back a little bit? I mean do we have to have the <coughs> first round in March? 
considering is if we feel this is important enough. I think it's going out. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of... You want to make decisions about personnel. So. Um, I don't... Well, know, I then, think. if you're making decisions about personnel based on that, I think that really begs the, like, need for putting some real solid information about all the school choices. I mean, if you're really saying, like, okay, based on what happens, you know, I think equity-wise, that's... Otherwise, it clearly looks like, well, we we showed people what great things are happening in Hardwick, and we gave people a choice. But didn't so, give them a so, whole okay, we didn't really picture. show them what the other so two options searching. were. You oh, could have chocolate ice cream, or you could have these other two flavors we're not going to really tell you about. Right, but here's the thing. I, I want to I just, like, kind of, I, I understand the concern about this, but I also want to bring back to the, I want to bring to the table the fact that when we surveyed the parents about why they moved their children to Hardwick from both of the two schools, it was sports, well, overwhelmingly. We asked 10 families and like but that three was responded, so I don't think we could say. I don't think like, it was three. It was like not the but whole. this is also new too. Right, it's right? brand new. This is new. But I numbers wise, that. like I think we had three or families that answered the exit survey, so I don't think we can judge. This is a late time to be having this conversation. I agree. And I don't feel comfortable asking principals to muster the troops when there's so much else going on at this point in the year. Um, you know, we want to be intentional about this process. We're trying to be, we're coming up with ideas for reconfigurations. Um, I also don't want to pitch something that, you know, we see as, a, as an option now that disappears in a year. And the family says, oh, now I've got to go through this process again. Well, I mean, if we're talking about options for reconfiguring, anything could disappear in a year, even what seems to be as most established, because we're, we're thinking about reconfiguring, so we can't assume it's just one thing is going to stay the same. Yeah, right? but I wouldn't use the same argument to say, let's remove the HES brochure from the site. I mean, they put a lot of work into that. I think it's I don't an think, accurate. I, that's what I'm, not, I'm not hearing anyone say we have to take away. I think we're, we're saying we need to add. Yep. And is there on the OSSU website? Is there, is that information already there? Like, there's, there's like if a parent goes to OSSU, do they then click on Lakeview? What do they see? Yeah. Does it have that kind of information that we could? It doesn't just have the type of information in detail as HES. But again, I don't know about cutting and pasting because that information is very specific to the school. Mm -hmm. Like Pat said, his teachers, you know, engaged in this in this effort to. Uh, contribute to that. Um, you, know, you can visit the website, there's information there, but again, uh, there are wheels in motion where there's just a lot of stuff going on right now, and I, I think this is the, the 11th hour. I hear that. Uh, I just really, like Phoebe said, if we're making decisions based on what these families choose, if we're not giving them a clear picture of exactly what their choices are. And I don't think we have a clear picture. That's part of my... Well, right yeah. now, for next year, the choices are Lakeview, Hardwick, or Woodbury, the same mm -hmm. as they have been. And so... But you've got two schools that, just anecdotally, people are saying, well, they're going to close. Right. So that might be making them so they're not choosing those two schools, which could skew our data and, that we're I think the strongest trying to go on. argument against that is, you know, our coming up with a model. And mm -hmm. The board saying, we're, this is the model we're behind. The administrators saying the same thing. And, and really, once we have that, really marketing that, messaging that. I feel like it's going to be too late then. Like, to not offer it for this year and say what great things are happening this year. If we're like, just wait, there's going to be some information coming out later. And then we've missed the chance for some families to make that decision for this coming school and, year. And, and that could also potentially inform what we think are effective models. Like, if there are some changes, the people making different choices, that could maybe... <coughs> be evidence for going, continuing in this direction, or you know, I mean, right. Is there any reason? I mean, I'm on so many things already that I'm really. This is probably not smart of me to do this, but if 
we were give, are we able to access a template that was used by the staff? Yeah, sure, it's, it's a public template you know, uh, would, program. Would it be okay for a school board member <laughs> to take that on? And just, I mean, we could look at like the incidental reports and just pick out, you know, Woodbury did this, 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 this. Like, like that information is in there. Is that something that we cannot do as board members? I, I defer to the principals. Uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, that possibly an extension of deadline. And so what you're saying basically is like we would put out pamphlets through Hardwick and Lakeview. Like Woodbury would put together something to send out through there. Or it would well, get sent or just to, to all, all so it's residents. About, it's about here is, you know, we are in this merge district. Students, families have a choice within these three beautiful campuses with each have great things to offer. Yeah. And... Um, here are some of the different things that are happening at each of these campuses and, and it's not even like you know I mean I think we should somehow make it available to community members that aren't right now enrolled in our public schools but put it out and somehow to the public that there are these great things happening that are continuing to happen in these three campuses and the cool thing about this merged district is we have some choice and we want to make the right match for our students uh, I know it's important to Woodbury people to get that message out. It's been made very clear to me. I haven't been doing the marketing job that kind of is is, is desired, but um, so I'd be willing to. So the I'm just I'm just trying to clarify. So we would um, mail it out um, to all residents of Hardwick, Woodbury, and Standard and, Standard and Greensboro well. would be mailed out through. Or whoever the school district choice was mailed out is what I'm envisioning. Because you probably don't, I mean, we could provide that information to people who don't have students in the school. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like when I give them to yeah, Hardwick and Greensboro to send out. Yeah, I guess I thought it would go, like there is stuff going home because there's the policy form that's going home. So it's like that's the packet of like, this is our policy procedure. Oh, Here's some information. Let us know if you have questions. Right. Kind of a thing. Yeah, I mean, I think we can send it home to our families um, and send it to the prospective preschool to kindergarten families. I think that's one of your most critical groups is preschool. I mean, having a preschool kid myself, I know that parents are already saying, well, I don't know if we're going to start kindergarten at that school. And, and that determines your incoming group, which determines your personnel. Your personnel. Mm -hmm. So, as an observer, can I uh, ask a question? Um, sure. <laughs> uh, what would it be like to make one brochure to represent all three schools? Um, just because that's kind of where the merger's going. Oh. And um, then you wouldn't have to make three. It's <laughs> brilliant. Um, what do you guys feel about that? That's a great idea. I think it is. Yeah. I mean, that's again, that's the we keep talking about. There are three campuses mm -hmm. unified, that's right? So, so, so how so would that about? work in? I just so like a I'm trifold a, kind of thing. Right. So, but I'm so Hardwick has their brochure on their website, okay. and. Um, what I'm wondering is if you're trying to educate parents about, I know, educate parents about um, the, what is offered at each school so that they would make decisions about where to send their child, how would you differentiate in a brochure the differences between the three schools so that you would, in theory, be swaying a parent to, or, or a parent would be choosing to go to this school for this reason as opposed to this school for this reason. Like, how would you do that feasibly? And also, I mean, that th this is not, like, we're talking about a brochure, but this is, you know, I'm just scrolling through. They have a little thing from every grade with a picture of what the kids are doing and a, and a like, a title and a little blurb. Can I add to that? that yeah to really get enough information to make a decision on where your child will spend the next six or seven years, 
a brochure. I mean, it can maybe get the conversation started, but they really need to dig a lot deeper. And I think, they do. like, I would, I would prefer, you know, uh, keep some of it electronic if, if, if folks have access, and also have an ability to reach yeah. out with questions. You know, come visit. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, I would hate to see like who, whoever makes a breast brochure is going to no. entice okay. kids. No. But I mean, that's. I think it's more. This the brochure is just the entry point. And well, I would hope that maybe we can get something out to parents about. Initially, like, look, there's a lot going on at all these schools. Yeah. You probably don't know about it. Please reach out yeah. to these contact people, and we'll fill you in. Come uh, visit, yeah, you know? Yeah. So. At the least, it's it's like, hey, we've spent a year together together as a merged district, and this is where we're at. We've got great things happening mm -hmm. in these three schools, and there's, you know, yeah. and, and I mean, if nobody there. changes yeah. their choice by this brochure, yeah. right. it's still a communication tool of saying there are these three communities that are doing you know and we're collaborating too but we're also there's some really beautiful things happening but it's also like yes you can't get much information but it it's other than handing a form saying you can apply to another school there's nothing right. there right. right i'm not saying this is the case but i do recall a conversation i believe it was at a board meeting about trying not to create competition yeah. between right. the schools yeah. Yeah. And, but I, I understand what you're saying but, but i do now recall like that was a part of it, like maybe one school had more access to resources to put mm -hmm. out more stuff or whatever the case may be. But I think we're seeing that um, each school has special things to offer and maybe putting it out there uh, in a... Or at least just encouraging parents to not just go with what they may have heard around the community, mm -hmm. but to reach out to find out there's more. Right. Even a, I mean, uh, kind of a letter from all of us like hey mm. did you know that Woodbury has this no yeah. how about Lakeview or Hardwick and just kind of like to trigger some curiosity that yeah. might, might encourage them to, to find out more so. think of it like the posters at the guidance office about different colleges or the brochures that come in the mail when you're applying <laughs> to colleges you don't expect to find out like everything about that college based on that pamphlet that comes in the mail but it's a heads up this is available to you and here's some bullet points that are about make this place unique and then you dive deeper obviously like in your exploration of that place but if we offer that for Hardwick and not for the other two it's just the same as like a college reaching out and then you never heard of these other colleges so you just didn't know, you don't know anything about I'm not about sure them. how much people are actually accessing what we have because it's, I don't know if they're going and finding it or, or, or why they're making their choices. I, I, mean, I had to guess, I guess they're probably not really looking at our website. All of the websites are pretty, I mean, Hardwick's definitely is the most, like, colorful, but they're all basically the same. Um, and I'm assuming it's because Christina's working on Hardwick's website. Well, I think we, we do put a lot of, try to put a lot of content right. in there and make sure we have links for... So this. we, at, we're at, I'm not trying to force this, but we're at 720 and we, we, I have heard people would like to leave here by 8. So um, I would like to try to understand where we're going with this. I mean, I guess at the least you could, we could do some, like, if we don't, can't pull this together, even like a cover letter of some sort that frames the context for these forms that are being sent home with a few pictures of some kids from each of the three campuses maybe with some captions and a, just like a little there's great stuff happening at Woodbury Lakeview and Hardwick campuses you know if you if you are interested in finding the right fit you know if you if you're interested in getting more information talk to somebody or something like so maybe it's not all the detail of this school this school and this school is happening but there's pictures of happenings from each school campus and is there a person at OSSU could do it no no and is it too much to ask of you Prince be honest well I think it just the, <laughs> the time frame would be and, and note that we've already begun sending out the letters is the, the the applications this week I know that some will be going out have already gone out and some will continue so it would be an additional communication that would go out so to families would it be better or maybe would it work and, and satisfy this desire if there was something that was some sort of cover letter that was put up on the homepage of the three schools 
I think it really needs to go out in the mail with the with application. That, yeah. I think or it really does. Well, but if the application has already gone out, so we want it to go out separately from the application. That'll at least fine. to the same com same okay. people. This is the same people. Because right? because um, like Pat just said, we don't think parents are accessing our website. So if we put it up there, then we did that work. <laughs> right, if right. they don't see it, then right. And I'm willing to try to work on it. I'm just nobody tell my husband. <laughs> is there something to do? I know. <laughs> He's not gonna watch this. I'm, I'm just. Um, I think. I think from your perspective and what I'm hearing that the the target for for this would be would be best suited for new people coming into the the um, district, like preschool to kindergarten. No, or even all, current, like hard. But then you're also talking kids out of <laughs> like the school that they're in, and maybe encouraging them to do transition. I'm not. I'm not. My understanding wasn't that we're trying to talk more about one school or another. It's just, hey, did you realize? Like, if you've had a student, like my kids all went to Lakeview, so if all of a sudden I was given choice to Hardwick, I don't know anything about Hardwick Elementary, and so I I may not take that initiative to look. And so, but what if what if the reason behind the initiative to look is because of the more of, like if you don't have the initiative to look, then that generally means that you're happy at Lakeview. But our job isn't but to you decide might not know for that the. There's another option. But our job isn't to decide for the parents, to their choice. Like no. our job is to provide the information, mm -hmm. to put it out there and let people. Right. If we're gonna say you have school choice. Our job isn't to think for people and decide why would you make that choice, right? Like our job is to put it out there. They can choose, mm -hmm. but we but we really have to offer equitable access to choice too and say, here's an informed choice. You can make it based on this information that we've that we've put out there, right? Yeah, I, like, think our, I think our best bet would be kind of like just a letter with a, more of a description of each school and make it equitable among what we're kind of yeah, sharing, yeah, right. like not trying to go through every single right. no, park no. and benefit, but put at least a description and then we can hopefully... And an invite encouraging parents if they have, you know, so curious I think at that all, is, please reach out. I, mean, I think that They part. need to see us, they need to come in, they need to, mm -hmm. you know, and they're not going to get in any brochure or reflect, it'll just be who did a better job on a brochure. It's not... Right. You know, it, it gives you yeah. some idea, but it doesn't reflect the school itself. So. Yeah, I just like to remind us all, like, let's not let the perfect get in the way of the good. Let's get something. Right. Something is better than nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. We're Yes, we probably should have thought of this six months ago. We didn't. We don't want to put a huge burden on people to create some masterpiece. It just has to be simple, succinct, this is, that, like, just like you just so said. We could collaborate just, on a letter. Hey, you, you know, you are receiving or have received the, the school of choice applications and, you know, you probably need some additional information about these three schools, maybe a couple of, you know, did you know, did you know, did you know, please reach out, we encourage you. Here's to, how to get so. a hold of all of us Here's kind of thing. Here's how to get more information, right. letting people know that that Ready. information is out there. And just so do the principals all feel comfortable with this directive? And everybody here feels and comfortable not, with us. As long as you don't need it by tomorrow morning. I don't need yeah. it by tomorrow morning. Call school tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> they will open up a window for us. There you go. Any <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Saturday. I mean, Suddenly we'll have a little time on our hands. Until yeah. March, yeah. and it's only mm -hmm. the beginning of February, and I think it's is it the end of March? I'm going to say second Friday in March. Or okay. Something? Well, so we do. We've second got six weeks March. before people are actually making the decisions. Even and if the ship's already sailed on the initial application it's not like we have to rush to put it out with it it could be a week or two and there will be a rolling schedule as well if there's room you know yeah right some that could go in some or could follow up with can i ask a question is it okay to get a public question so these are these are letters that are going out what's what, what's the context we're talking about a brochure that's in a packet we're talking about the the that some some student there's a there's a school choice form that we're sending out. Got some it. students have gotten it, some have not, but that will go out to presumably all students in all students that are not in sixth grade and going to Hazen. So mm -hmm. pre K in theory. And it lets the parents know that they have the choice of they may, if they want to, move their child from their town school to one of the other two schools in the district. 
So this letter presumably would go to that same population, letting them know, like, hey, you just got this mm -hmm. application. Here's some information about these schools in case you didn't know. Because, yeah, that's and, what and the, where you the brochure, the infamous brochure uh -huh. <laughs> that that was produced by Hardwick Elementary School right. has been going out with that no, application. No, it hasn't. No, it's so it's just, just been on the website? We've created it. it, it not, it, it's kind of a school choice brochure, but also we just want our website to have some information about us, just to kind of beef it up as people come. So we've had it up on our website uh, since last spring, and we'll be updating it soon Got it. to get some pieces. But that's, we call it a brochure, but it's, it's an electronic you know, document, uh, document yeah. that describes and the school. It, was there any printout of that going in? in no, there was not. No, so there was no, no reference to that, no printout. I'm, I'm, I, if I had to guess, I would think that probably most folks in Woodbury or Lakeview communities don't know it exists. They may, but yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Unless so, they're surfing websites. So we're talking about an additional so. printed thing that would go out. No, I no. think we've dropped the brochure. Yeah. So we're talking about it. Well, so this letter. letter. I think we're talking about a letter that's going to go out. But, but but just to be clear, it is a printed letter. Yeah. That would go out, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That would say here, you know, explaining the school choice. Here's information about each of the schools. Here's where you can go to find out more inform, still more information. And where is that? Where it would be to the website. Where? How do we find? That out would more? be. Well, you, I think that this would be, I, my understanding is that this would be inviting parents who are interested in a school to get in touch with the principal of the school to come and visit the school so that they could get that kind of or go to the website time. and go to the website. I don't think the website's, no, I don't know. I think the website's not helpful if you're trying to make a decision like that. Especially since they're all so hodge and hodge. So we are at a, um, we are at a, time where we need to make some decisions. It's 7.30, we need to do a consent agenda, executive session, and action items. And we also have the big possible future district configuration slash models. So, do we want to do we want to give here. ourselves 10 minutes and talk about that and then leave the last 20 for everything else? Or do we want to table that until the next meeting? Don't we have a meeting? We do have a, we month. did not decide on the time or the date, but we did. Can I just ask a clarify? Oh, you had a Kim's, question. Kim's first. Go ahead. When we initially drew this budget up, the discussion of transportation mm -hmm. was based on the fact that we knew nothing about kids applying. Um, I see in the policy letter that we're continuing the same policy. And the idea was to come back and revisit whether or not we would offer transportation. So, you know, I would not like to see this policy go out until we clarify whether or not we're going to well, provide we, transportation. But we approved our budget yeah, without talking about adding transportation. Oh, in. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm but sorry. You, but you approved it on January 16th. So, I mean, we can't go back and say we're going to provide transportation when we've already, we've already you done. Don't, I mean, am you I don't know that because you, you don't know what you're providing transportation for yet. Well, we do because we have the, in that procedure it's saying transportation will be when provided we, in your when town. We drew or if you, up Kim, can I finish my sentence? Procedure. Let me finish. You just interrupted. So either um, transportation will be invite and um, provided in your town or if you can make it to a bus stop that's there. That's in the proceed that's in procedure. So we so have we're paying for the same routes that, that right. we've always paid for. Yes. And we are not providing transportation for for I don't know what you call that. School for choice. choice. School choice. For school choice. And we're not changing any routes. We're not right. changing routes, no. We had a lengthy discussion about the bus busing and we added we added some money in the budget for the busing, but that's not part of L that's that was the OSSU that. budget, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That was the busing for some high school students going to different campuses, right? Right. So to your original question too about time frame about if we we have some community members here that came knowing that the the 
district configuration models were on the agenda. Okay. So uh, even if we... So can, <coughs> can we spend 10 minutes on it then? And then I just... Or if people want to agree to go after 8 o'clock. I just don't want to... I don't want to, I want to, I'm trying to be sensitive to people not wanting to go over knowing that we have added a second meeting to the month until we, until we don't need it anymore for the foreseeable future. So I'm asking the board what, what I, you all want to do. I definitely agree that we should discuss it now since, since it's on the agenda and people came to talk about it or to hear about it. And, um, do we have enough? If, if somebody needs to leave before 8 o'clock, do we have enough people still to go do our executive session? If Not if I leave. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, Adam, how are you feeling? <laughs> oh, okay. I can go a little beyond you. Okay. okay. Um, Just set a time frame for the, for the district models. So how about we go until quarter of 8? Is everybody comfortable with that? I need to have some sort of input. Okay. Um, okay, so let's dive in. Um, we are going to talk about possible configuration for, to be clear, this is for the 21-22 school year, not next year. So, does anybody want to start? Can we, anybody got any can ideas? We start, can we start with a meeting? Date and time? Yes, we can start with our one, next meeting. Them. Yep, sure. Let's then start we all know. So the next meeting that we're going to do, we had talked in our last, I was just pulling up our notes from the last meeting, and I think we had said the suggestion was the first and the third Wednesday of each month, and the second meeting would be available for any other business that wasn't covered in the first. Mm -hmm. So so February, the, the unfortunately, I'm in the middle of negotiations. <laughs> the 19th? Yes, on okay. the 19th. So. And that is the day after our annual meeting. Yeah. So do we want to, I mean, we just, we don't have to, we said that, it was in the minutes, it was mm -hmm. a suggestion. Well, can we do the uh, 20th? I can. Thursday? Anybody? I can. I can. Laura? Um, yes. Yes? Okay. So we'll set that for the 20th, and that will be... Um, Are these meetings going to rotate? Oh, well, I just was going to ask that yeah. question, because <laughs> our next meeting, how do we want to how do we want to rotate them? Because oh. if they're... Are we going to keep them in the same place that we had the first meeting? Sure. sure. So we have yeah. two meetings sure. a month at yeah. the same place? Yeah. So this yeah. one will okay. be... At, the next one, the 20th, will be here at Hardwick, mm -hmm. and then in March we will meet twice at mm -hmm. Woodbury. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah, that sounds good. Excellent. Good. I thought that was easy. And six to eight? Six to eight. Good. <coughs> Not eight Does that one. work for you, Adam? It doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for I, you. I um, can commit to one regular meeting a month. That sounds great. We'll do this on our own and we'll get back. I'll let you know. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So we did that part. Uh, okay. I'm going to jump right in then. Go for it. Um, so we had asked for some um, thoughts from you guys. Do you have any? Do you know when you will? Where are you? Well, we have some thoughts, but you know, but I, but I want to uh, preface, pre preface this with they're just thoughts. So yes. I know a lot of this times is, when things yeah. come out, yeah. it, it you know it can solicit reactions, and these are you know. But you asked for other configurations. So this is so I'll. This right. is a brainstorming right. meeting. Brainstorming. This is brainstorming. This is not making um, decisions you know, at all. This is just throwing things out there. You know, one configuration, of course, is we, we maintain the current configuration as we have. So mm -hmm. so that's, you know, K through 6 in the other two schools and pre-K 6 in, in Hardwick. So, mm -hmm. so that's certainly a configuration to consider. Um, beyond that, um, we, were, we were looking at some needs that we have within the schools. And, and we wanted to look at it from... You know what what would work well for our kids you know like what what do we really need and 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 one piece we came up with was you know our current sixth graders and sixth graders in general sixth grade right now is a it's a really tough age you know i mean it's 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 hard if you have any sixth graders out and about you know it's it's early middle school and they have social emotional needs and other things that that aren't always best suited for an elementary school. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, kind of a, a dream we would have or it would be, what, what about a, like if we could create a sixth grade academy 
the sixth grade academy with all the kids in o OSUED from the schools, you know, being together with a program that promotes a lot of social emotional learning, personal learning plans, um, and other types of things that would be would be good for the sixth graders, and um, prepare them for you know entering to hazing for most of them. And some the standard kids might have some school choice, but to really coalesce that group and give them the the skills and 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 some that they would need to be successful at hazing because when they hit hazing in seventh grade. You know, if they're kind of having a little trouble and struggling at Hayes in the seventh grade, it, it, it doesn't always get better from there. You and know, I so. can speak from experience on my own and also my own students coming from Lakeview to Hazen is shock. Yeah. yeah. It is just sheer shock. So. Right. It's, it's hard. And uh, yeah. so that's kind of looking at that. Uh, personalized learning plans, place-based learning, social-emotional skill building would be, I think, an awesome thing for us to do for our sixth graders. So you then take it, well, where is that going to happen? I mean, we, you know, I don't have any room in this building. I mean, we have two sixth grade classrooms, um, and, and I would, as much as I love them, I would go visit them somewhere else if they were somewhere <laughs> else. <laughs> um, so maybe we look at one of the other schools, perhaps Lakeview as being a location for the sixth grade academy, um, and, you know, putting some resources up there and um, a good team together and being able for, out of Lakeview, there's a lot of opportunities getting up to Bar Hill to study the lake you know, out of Caspian to be, you know, involved in that community uh, would be one possibility, you know, if we didn't have a full K-6 program at Lakeview. Are you envisioning keeping, this is in addition to what is already at Lakeview? No, that would be, okay. that would be if we don't have the K-6 program at Lakeview, okay. wow, now we have an opportunity to, to kind of take advantage and have some space where we can grow some, some good programs that wouldn't necessarily have the same financial cost that a full K-6 program has. So I think there would be, you know, again, we don't, we're not into the financials, but, uh, you know, if we had to look at it, we'd say likely that's going to cost less than a full full school program um, up at Lakeview for K-6. And that, that opens up a couple of other opportunities. Again, back to, to what's good for the kids in the community. Um, here at Hardwick, we, we and within the OSUD, we, we would love to have a um, social emer a social emotional learning classroom to help some of the students throughout the district that have trouble, you know, accessing their, their classes and academics because of behavioral and social emotional needs. Um, right now, we, we struggle to find room for that and resources for that. So if we were to free up uh, a classroom here at Hardwick because we don't have one of the, the sixth grade classrooms, um, perhaps we could start a program here that would serve needs of kids, social and emotional, um, and maybe even bring students that are currently outplaced into other schools based on behavioral needs bring them back here where they could be part of the community, they could be in the, in the school, and they could, you know, more easily transition in and out of their uh, you know, grade appropriate classroom here at Hardwick. And the project to wear grant that we've got can find a lot of the resources. Yeah, and that, that would be the ideal piece that we would envision that there could, could be some good funding for that that would not be part of our local budget. And you're envisioning that would be accessible from all three or four towns, or yes. just Hardwick? No, no, no. This is all, for both of these ideas, it's all four towns. For, okay. For okay. students that we would identify as, um, you know, we really, they need they need some extra support that the individual schools can't provide. Mm -hmm. So. Good question about the AWARE grant and the funding for that. Um, would there be, you know, I there have been other programs in the past in the district that have been wonderful and have been set up and have been grant funded, and then when the grant goes away, the program goes away. Mm -hmm. So would there be, how would this be funded ongoing past the AWARE grant time, or how does that work? Is the AWARE a big grant piece ongoing? of this devoted to sustainability. Okay. Um, the state is working with us. We've got outside service providers working with us to um, not only establish relationships, but also determine how we can sustain those relationships and sustain the supports. Okay, so that's part of the AWARE grant program is finding ways to keep it going. In, in identifying and, and setting up how do we do this in a way that is sustainable and that the, the children that are involved in this aren't like in there for the rest of their school years. Like we can actually, the idea would be that they are more successful and, and um, which is the, the number one thing, but on a, a nice benefit of that is it wouldn't be as costly moving down the road because they don't need the, the extreme supports that they might need now. And we, we currently spend a pretty significant amount of money on, on you know, needs for kids. And, uh, so that's, that would hopefully sustain itself there. So just to follow this out a little bit, if there were a classroom or something that was specifically for children who needed more social-emotional supports, and this was accessible to all 
students within the district, would it be something they would come to for a period of time during the day? Would it be something where they would then be coming to Hardwick for their full school day? And yeah, if, I mean, I, like, how does that again, this is the, these are the initial thoughts. And if they're just and, like, if this is like, we don't know that yet, that's right. okay. But I think it would be, you know, one model would be that they would be, you know, at Hardwick for their full school day. And ideally, they would not be in that particular classroom for their full, if they're a second grader, they would be in a second grade classroom as much as we could have them in a second grade classroom. And that's part of the reasoning yeah. for Hardwick, because they would have access to the other five grades in this case, mm -hmm. where if we tried an alternative in-house model at Woodbury or Lakeview, you wouldn't maybe be able to integrate them as much into their grade to their grade okay. levels. Okay, because yeah. it's and the, 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 the funding source too, the special ed um, money comes into play if we're consolidating kids with, with those needs and we can address them better in one place versus three different schools. Mm -hmm. That SPED funding increases would probably increase yeah. at, at Hardwick. But the, the, and the Justine can talk to us probably a little bit more than I can, but the, having the, um, I'll, keep, I'll call it an alternative space, but in a place where they can access uh, areas of strength um, throughout the school is, is in, in my opinion, and I think Justine agrees, a, a much bigger uh, and better position um, than being in a, in a place where, like I said, they can't access the other, all the other classes because the setting mm -hmm. in one of those smaller schools wouldn't allow for that. Okay. Do we have, and I, again, I'm going to go with Catherine, because you may not know the information, but on average, numbers-wise, sixth grade around the school district? Sixth graders? Right like now we have uh, about 40 at Hardwick. Okay. This current year is sixth grade. Yep. And I don't know how many, so we think we have... Twelve. Twelve so at Lakeview and five. So, so, so we have 57 this year. It's a pretty big class this year, so okay. I guess next year we probably have... I think there's maybe 36 fifth graders currently at Hardwick. So. We, we'd be looking in mid 40s typically, I think, for okay. a sixth grade. Okay. And, then, and then kids that need that would potentially need to access this alternative program. Yeah, that that you know that would be guesstimate. Uh, um, that's hard to say because it, it, without the model, I mean, yeah. it, it, in in the the degree of need of the child would would you know. What I'm, if, mm -hmm. what I'm trying to envision yeah. in my head is okay. You're taking. 57 kids and putting them in this building, but then you're going to have, like, is it going to be balanced? No, well, we, I would guess that, kind of deal. Uh, no. that in the social-emotional uh, classroom, support classroom that we would have, um, maybe 10 kids at some point, yeah. okay. so, you know, it might build up to that. And, and some, many of those would be from Hardwick because we have, you know, most of the kids anyway, mm -hmm. and a, a few from the others, so it wouldn't be a wash. And then have you but thought about what you would do with the students who currently access Lakeview? For? For, so if we K took, five. yeah, the K, thank you. The yeah, K that, five. that again, the, once we get, if we, if we move away from the configuration that we currently have with K6 and Lakeview, mm -hmm. then Lake, and then, you know, Lakeview would have choice. It would be choice to, you So know, they could choose between the other two yeah. campuses. Mm -hmm. gotcha. yep. Okay. And of course, when they get to sixth grade, they'd be on the list. They'd go to, yeah. Okay. And I think it, oh, go ahead, Chris. I just, I know that we like allowed such a short time, and I want, I had two proposals from community members I wanted to throw out there because I know we're not making decisions tonight. Yeah, yeah. And then, because it's another, um, I've had some, we've had some discussion just recently with, you know, Head Start and Hardwick is looking for space. They're really looking mm -hmm. to, and they're making, they're looking to make a big move. And they're really ex would be excited about partnering with the school and actually having their um, having Head Start here at Hardwick because it's it's centrally located um, and it, and the, you know it would be great for transition for kids to kindergarten if they're in a school to begin with. So when we mentioned two sixth grade classrooms being freed up, one would be potentially for the social emotional learning space, and the other might be for something like Head Start, and that would bring its own grant funding and money available um, as well. So. That's good. that's our brainstorm. Okay. Okay. That's good. Um, I think that sounds really interesting, and lots of um, lots of th um, good thoughts went into that. I just wanted to bring up two really quick ones that have been proposed to me by community members, just to put them out there. And obviously, they're not fleshed out as that plan sounds like a lot more fleshed out. These just came to me, people putting a bug in my ear in the community. And one was um, having Woodbury and Lakeview be um, early grades, K through three. Um, um, and then this school being um, K through six, and the idea being those two smaller schools would send kids here 
um, fourth, fifth, sixth. Um, and because parents in those um, communities have voiced the idea of wanting to keep their, especially their little kids, mm -hmm. in the close community and not having their kindergartners ride a bus so far, but to have the early grades in those two schools mm -hmm. then come here um, a little further into elementary school. So that was a proposal um, in the community, at least I heard in from one person in <laughs> Lakeview community. And the other was uh, maybe a little more out there, um, an idea of having um, the three schools have a four-day week school, Monday through Thursday, and then a outdoor forest Friday kind of thing um, where all three campuses would operate four days a week. Um, and then the Friday would be outdoor ed. And I don't know if that would be on all three areas, like Bar Hill, Hardwick, Woodbury. But that could be potentially be flexible. But a flexible sort of Forest mm -hmm. Friday kind of thing. I don't know how that necessarily saves the two small buildings in terms of, like, sustainability, but just a creative thought um, that had um, come to me. So and those then if we're just throwing ideas out quickly. Yes, <laughs> please go for um, it. You mentioned, Patrick, your first thing was maintain current configuration as is, but um, to build off of that, not just maintain current configuration as is, but really to do the work of building a campus identity like we've talked about. Um, so that's one. Um, another thing also kind of is connected, building off of this, the second idea that you presented, um, but I was kind of thinking about what, what about it? the idea of a community school in the sense of like really wrapping around services for students and families, not just like the SEL mental health piece, but like the medical, like we've talked about dental and health services, like I know Cat Cabot has a health center on site. I was just at a school in the Bronx that was a community school and they, they're doing amazing things with a very challenging population. So something to explore potentially. Um, and then also, um, I just wonder about, it. I don't know anything about this community, but you know we've talked a lot about a really there's a really strong homeschool population in this region. Are they looking for space? Is there some way that we can provide something different and enrich that maybe they would choose to do part time? Or, you know, like there's so many students here in this area. How can we make connections between our buildings and services with the other kids in our area? Mm -hmm. So those are three other ideas. To can I just add one? I like that. So there's some great ideas here as well. One thing that we were thinking is, once you give up a space in a building, it's gone. You know, like, but if we can keep education happening in all three sites, I, I would, I would envision that that we'll have a growth in population because of the great programs that we have going on, and we can see the schools fill back up even more than they are now. So, can I ask you a question? You're t you're talking about different configurations or designations and choice at the same time. How does that work? Some of it, I mean, I think some of it is some of it is choice, but some of it is not. If we were to, if we were just to take one of these, if we were to move all sixth graders to Lakeview, all sixth graders would go to Lakeview. Mm -hmm. So people would still have choice between Hardwick and Woodbury in terms of the K through five or pre K through five, but some of it is, it's like it's a combination model, and I mean, I think that before we make any decisions about any of this, we're going to have a community input, we're going to have community meetings. So the hope is that we are going to have the community on board and that will include parents who will decide that they want to do this. I mean, it's, you know, yes. Can I ask a question in regard to that? Just in terms of decision-making processes around really big questions like that, mm -hmm. what what are some models that we can explore to, to, to effectively make the decisions and evaluate it. I mean, obviously budget is a big one and that's an easy one. That's sort of the lowest common denominator, I feel like. But then, you know, is this visioning process that's, that, Adam, you're leading, is that right? Or that the district? Yeah, I mean, that seems like an exciting, so it's like, are there criteria that we have to hit? I mean, there's obviously, um, you know, education milestones, right, that, that have to be met. So, like, the, the new models would have to fit into that. But I guess it's just a question of, from as a community perspective, or from from the community's perspective, it would be helpful to have some framework and a way to think about how do we decide what new model could be good. Yeah, a helpful resource is the um, education quality standards, which are accessible via the uh, Agency of Education website, and they kind of outline what those milestones that you mentioned are in areas like um, 
know, there are five domains, um, safe and healthy schools, finances, proficiency-based learning, personalized learning, and uh, high-quality staffing. And then there are indicators under each. So that sort of provides the framework, I think, that you're talking about for, you know, those targets we have to hit. Yeah, yeah. targets, but then... But then there's fle plenty of flexibility. Yeah, and I, and I guess I mean uh, sort of other, maybe less concrete yeah. milestones as well, like you know having a having continuing to have a school building in yeah. communities. I mean that's a more local. Yeah, um, that's one of the values that we're trying to honor. I mean, that, you know, it seems to me that there's a there's a vocal and pretty big portion of the community that that is holding on to that value, and that's why we're we're working to come up with a solution uh, that would ensure that these schools go on and, and thrive. Yeah. yeah, and be and be dynamic and attractive yeah. uh, to attract to young families. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I do think that what um, the community member that you spoke with brought up is an important point of the younger kids, kindergartners, first graders. Um, in any of these configurations that we consider that remove grade levels from Lakeview or Woodbury campuses, um, thinking about the, the transportation issues mm -hmm. and um, the concerns of, of community, you know, parents in the community mm -hmm. of how far their kids are going to have to go to access their education every day and whether that's going to be reasonable, you know, just from a pure logistical standpoint, what are these bus routes going to look like, mm -hmm. um, say, taking a five-year-old who lives in Greensboro all the way to Woodbury, let's say, for school. You know, what does that look like on the ground mm -hmm. um, is a big question that I think before we get too far, I mean, obviously right now we're just brainstorming, but I think it's something that needs to be brought into the early stages is just the logistical mm -hmm. realities of some of the um, moving grades around. And the fact that I think I've her OSSU is the OSSU board is looking at busing and expectations and whatnot, right? Kind of. Kind yeah, of. We, yeah. We had some meetings earlier in the year about sort of um, clarifying and reframing school bus expectations mm -hmm. for and safety I, and for climate. And I know it's an ongoing. I mean, it has been an ongoing issue for years. So yes, this well, any decisions we make could affect. Yes. And in terms of like, again, we're trying to overall save cost and it's, you know, okay. So I'm going to wrap up this conversation and we can continue it later. Um, I forgot, but we do need to talk about uh, the annual meeting and um, I think it would be helpful for us to just say what board, what seats are available for next year and also, um, I, it's a, like, Thank you. Thank you Thank all. You. Thank, Thank, you guys. Thank you. 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 So there's Kevin's seat, which is a two-year seat on two years of a three-year. There's mine, which is a three-year. Who else? Which one of you two are up? You're up. Ruth. Uh, Rose's. And Rose's up. Phoebe's up. I couldn't remember. So it's just three. Yeah. And then the vacant. And then the vacant hard work seat. So, four. so uh, I I don't part, yeah the, some of ours were just one year okay mm -hmm. um can we ask can we sure. can we ask each other if we're running again yeah can we so yeah. you're gonna are you coming back Rose are you coming back I'm planning to run for the seat okay. Maybe you think scary away? Yeah, are you gonna come back? Um, no, I mean, I'm. Yes or no? Planning, <laughs> you yeah. just said oh, no. You just said no. You just said no. Yes. Yes, you are. Okay. Lead with the yes. Lead with the yes. Okay. Uh, how about you? Um, yeah, I think I will. Um, so we just need another person from Hardwick. So, Hardwick, <laughs> do you guys wanna? Anybody wanna come out and do this? <laughs> It'd be great. Um. And then I wanted to ask you guys real quick about, uh, we can obviously do front porch forum and blast about the, just also about vacant seat and about the annual meeting. Um, and I can write that up and then, unless somebody else wants to write that up and then we'll just all post it. I don't know if anybody else feels like doing that. 
And the can, but it's probably on the same one as you know, on Greensboro Glover. Okay. Yeah, if you post it. it and then share it or okay. write it up and we'll share okay. it to our front porches. Yep. Um, did we want to do anything else in terms of like the, I mean, I'm hoping because this went out, it says it when we're meeting right there, that it's kind of good advertising, but I, I don't know so. if people feel like we need to do more than just a front porch forum and this. I do. What, I do. what I else, what else would you feel like does would it, be helpful? Does it go up at each of the elementary s campus buildings that yeah. post the annual meeting? That looks nice, by the way. It does. It does. It does look it was well nice done. Nice job. And does it go up at the post offices? Yeah, there are, there are designated uh, sites throughout the town, and if you ask, uh, Taylor can tell you what they're saying. Okay. And I would assume, like, it's the, the websites? Hall, would mm -hmm. the yeah. school websites, the OSSU website, would have those? I would assume. Yeah. The OSSU <laughs> website has it. It's not on the Hardwick website in terms of, like, the next, but we're, n oh, yes, no. February 18th, there's a community gathering, but it doesn't say anything about the annual school district meeting. Okay. Can we ask for it to be put up on the school websites yeah. also? That sounds good. Um, it, considering that nobody looks at them. Robocall? Yeah, is that a... Yeah, if you let me know when... You authorized put, use of when, that yeah, system. When that would be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Well, it's coming up in two weeks. It's what about that? February 18th. Do you have, a, you have a communication, just like a letter or an announcement? Um, you know, the Woodbury has a town website. We could also put it on there. So does mm -hmm. Yeah. Harvard does too. Yeah. Yep. So I, doing a robocall, if we had the, the language that you would specifically like, if you can send that to me. I bet it's in here. Probably um, <laughs> Right, yeah. Well, I mean, I think we can just say, like, there's this is the... Yeah. But if you I'll email about, you something. We're doing the electronic voice now. Oh, so oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotcha, and, I gotcha. Uh, Will they do well. OSUED? Oh, well, we can, we can, we can all. We know how to do it? Okay. I usually post things for, like, for, um, face, um, front porch form and then on the Friends of Woodbury website. So. Okay. Oh, plus doesn't have them, but I know. Parents of Woodbury, I'm on that. We have a Greensboro Town website. We do. Is that something that you're able to get Laura Lee to talk to Kim about getting it on the Greensboro Town website? We, we can ask. <laughs> well, just I know Laura Lee knows everybody. Yep, so yep she we can, can ask, for sure. All right, I'll come up with text for the robocall and for Front Porch Forum, and the Front Porch Forum one will be for all the other web-based sites. Is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And I'll share it with everybody, and then you guys can blast it so out. That, that, that'll include our website. You, you can add it to your website. Or, you can add yeah, it to yeah. the Friends of HES website. You can add it to whatever okay. website. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, great. Done. Um, so we need to approve cons the consent agenda. Um, will you put something on the agenda for next time? Next time, at some point, just yeah. I had a, I had a, uh, I don't know what's my, we're in February. I think it was back in December. I had a uh, community member reach out to me with a concern, a complaint, and I have been really bad at not bringing it forward. So okay, <laughs> that will remind me that I need to. Do okay. That. You have the uh, financial stuff there. Mm -hmm. Do we um, just need to approve the consent oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> this is, yeah, we have to, we have to sign. It's getting late. I know, I know. This is why I said, do we want, are we sure we want to do this? Um, Thank you for doing that. I think that was nice Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. to give, take the little time for the district stuff, because I think we have a lot of people here that were interested. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, just to get Are they all Woodbury folks? I don't know anybody. Yeah. So. No, uh, there was one that was one not. One from Greensboro. Greensboro. Greensboro and the rest of oh. way. The one um, with the blonde hair is with the group. So that's what that was the sitting on the was a um, Lakeview Facilities Project. While you're signing, do you mind if I talk to you about that? Do you need a hard copy? Oh, I have it on. Yeah, yeah it's right. Yeah, we've got it. Okay. Just um, a quick question. Oh, no, you go. Sorry. You go. You yeah. go. So we have, we have a Lakeview Building Fund. That is money that can only be spent on Lakeview Building. Mm -hmm. 
um, as you well know, um, and so we were looking to the most uh, efficient and highest priority use of some of that money. And um, so uh, we got some quotes around asbestos tile removal um, in our lower hallway, um, and we're proposing to do about half of half oh, of that. That's in that way. That's going to mess up. It's okay. Half of that okay. removal okay. and um, replacement, removal, remediation, and replacement. Um, and then we're going to be removing some walls that are temporary in a classroom so that we can have that classroom in order to move all of the kids up into the upper building. Um, so you Christine, can kind of is that see. number then is that number for half or are you saying half of that number you're going to? So that number is for half. Half, okay. Yep. Right. Um, we're just trying to make sure that we can get this done by August when kids come back to school and um, so that we can all be in one building for next year. So that is the plan? That is that is the plan. Um, and so so the um, it's we've kind of give Larry has helped me uh, outline all the numbers and sort of the timeline of of that this project um, and we're asking for thirty nine thousand five hundred and eleven dollars. How much? Thirty nine thousand five hundred and eleven dollars. And that's already money that we allocated in the past for the Lakeview mm -hmm. Building Fund. How much? Correct. Is the fund? Fund. I I think okay. uh, approximately ninety three thousand. Ninety thousand. Yeah. Can you? Oh, sorry. Can you tell me that it says um, the large classroom? I don't know your room numbers. Is that Miss Cass' bathroom? Okay, so where we met. Yep. Before where we okay. met last time. Yep. And then, can you tell me more about the creation of a safe room? Yeah, so currently we have a room that is divided into with partitions yep. and we have a safe room there and in order to remove, remove the asbestos we need to remove the walls and we would have to do away with our, our, our safe space. Mm -hmm. So this would just be trying to um, make sure we're not losing anything by gaining a classroom and not move and not losing. And you would try to, up, I, I spent, I was a para at Lakeview for two years, so I yep. spent some time in that room, and so you're going to try to oh, make, it, make it a little better and, and safer? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. I mean, I think the whole thing is, um, the whole plan is designed to, to make it, to make the building just more user friendly and using a sp space more efficiently and mm -hmm. for, you know, higher priorities. Mm -hmm. And how about the um, concrete pavement? Oh, that yeah. whole piece is that part of it. So, well, we we talked about it, um, and we thought that we would ask you for this right now. We, we are really hoping that we can also do some repaving in order to. Um, it's just really eroding and just mm -hmm. for safety. And we're looking into trying to combine that with some other projects that might be going on in OSSU this summer in order to to get it to happen because some of the reasons why it hasn't happened is because um, the projects have been too small for yeah. contracting. Yeah. So trying to do it in conjunction with some of the other um, projects that might be going on in OSSU. And there are some. So, so I intentionally did not include that in this because this is sort of the plan of um, moving to one building and the fixing the asbestos and kind of all fits together here. I recommend reaching out to the town too, as far as other paving projects, just they in case. Did already, they did, did it, the yeah. Thing, and they didn't do it when they did the town mm -hmm. clerk's office. Okay. Didn't. So reach out again. <laughs> Is there a reason the why oil? the Black River Design bills aren't being paid out of that same fund? Um. <laughs> The reason was because we didn't have an action item from any previous board meeting that approved the release of that fund, so we paid them out of the general fund. Can we back that up? I'm not sure the answer to that. Adam, do you know the Use, answer? Use um, the funds for to pay Black, Black River, River Design. Well, I, I really think that uh, Black River Designs ought to be, you know, we're talking about the construction in and that uh, uh, Greensboro or Lakeview, and I think we ought to uh, pay for those bills out of the same fund also. I can, I can uh, look into that. Yeah, I mean, I think 
I think the way that I've I've been thinking about it is um, this money is just for Lakeview anyway, and uh, you know we're likely going to have other projects that are going to come up at some point that you know so it's it's kind of like we're going to use it one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but I understand that you're right. It fits. You know, unless it's something that this board has specifically, you know, budgeted for or funded for, you know, then I, you know, I think it should come out of that fund, you know. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we do. Uh -huh. While we're talking about that fund, the prior school board uh, authorized some um, work to be done on the hood in the sum of $3,500. Um, that... The vent? The that was done. Yeah. Yeah. That was done. That, right? that fund, or that re authorization, was done way back in May. Why is it now February... And we're just now getting the bill. Um, I'm not, I don't know if I can fully answer your question, but I think one of the reasons that some of our bills have been delayed, and this may be the situation in this circumstance, is that um, with the name change of the district, it has caused um, us to need to re invoice things, and some things have not gotten caught up. We're, we're looking like we're getting close to it, but it took quite a lot of time to have to contact every vendor in order to have them re-invoice us with the OSUD names. <laughs> so I'm at, that's my guess. Because the work was done last summer, right? For mm -hmm. that hood? Yeah. 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 I got this thing about late submittal of bills to the OSHU for payment. And I, I put this in that category you know you're not the only one there, there's another one that was remiss by two months and submitting a bill you know I it's only fair that we pay the people for their services in a timely manner and that requires each individual campus to submit the bills in a timely manner, given the number of times you, you guys meet in a course of a week or a month, there shouldn't be any reason why there's a late uh, transmittal or submission yeah, of a bill. I mean, it, we're just the first step in the process of that, too, and there are other pieces involved with logistics at the business office that sometimes can hold things up, too. It's, it's, there's multiple facets to that, but I, noted. I start with them. <laughs> okay. I start with them and then work backwards. Okay. Right. So yes, I, I, I'm fully aware of that and I was asking the people, the CFO, Sonia, you know, other people, who, why, what. And we, you know, there's a couple of instances we have to contact the software company around our um, Infinite Vision system because we've had vendors like names and addresses just like disappear and so some software malfunctions too have been going on just backstory but so oh, um, we're, t we're approving this proposal the consent uh, like, sorry yes <laughs> yeah. we ha we also have to approve the consent agenda mm -hmm. so those are two action items we have first two so let's do the Lakeview one I move to yeah. approve the proposed Lakeview facilities project. I'll second. For, for? for $39,511, is that right? For $39,511. I'll, I'll second that. All those in favor, or is there any discussion? I've had it. All those in favor of approving the uh, Lakeview proposed facilities project for the amount listed uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Uh, is there, are there any questions or anything else we need to talk about for the consent agenda? Okay. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. 
there's a typo. I'll second it. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Okay. We have executive session and then future agenda items. Let's do future agenda items and get that out of the way. I've got Samantha's uh, concern. concern that she's going to bring up under discussion items, I'm assuming. Sure. Okay. Wherever you want to put it. Okay. Um, We're going to data. data. And this is not this is not the next. It's in March, right? This is this not is our next meeting. This is because the next meeting is dedicated solely to talking about district configuration. Right. right. Okay. So our March. What is that? First Wednesday in March. First. Right. We're gonna have to reorganize, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. We have to reorganize. When was that after our? It's after the 18th. So gotcha. yes. Which actually, legally, wait a second. Mm -hmm. Oh, legally we have to reorganize on the 20th. March 4th. Why the 20th? Because the annual meeting and new office, new people will have been voted in on the 18th. So we have to do that at our next meeting. We can't wait till March because we can't meet without reorganizing. Re reorganizing. Well, well, next meeting's the 4th, right? No, we just well, we made it. We just, meet, we just did second. the one for the 20th. The subcommittee, which is really all of us. Which is all of us. And we'd have a quorum and we can't meet. We can't. Well, I think we have to reorganize at that one. Right. Wait, what? At the February 20th? Yeah. yeah because because we have a quorum and it's after we have, we've had, we potentially will have a new member for Hardwick oh, and dang. we have to reorganize. Well, that but that take doesn't long. take long. No, it doesn't. Time. I'm just, oh. I'm just making sure that we're above board with no, all yeah, of that. I don't want to screw it up. Just to clarify, you're canceling the March meeting? We're not. No. no. Oh. We just we're have to reorganize on the, on February 20th. 20th instead of in March. Because we're meeting on February 20th to talk about the campus Utilization. The positions are being voted from the floor at the annual meeting. Right. Yeah, but that's not until March, right? No, no the no, annual meeting's on February 18th. Board. Oh, so at the 20th you'll The 20th reorganize. will reorganize. So I'm just going to make sure that that gets on the on the agenda for the February 20th meeting. Okay, mm -hmm. so the March meeting. We're going to get the one on the 20th warned and all that. It's going to be done. Okay. Yes, I will let Taylor know all about it. Okay, so data's coming in on the March meeting. Uh, we'll have all the regular... I have a small uh, fundraising proposal that we need to get approved. That should be really quick. Okay. Anything else for March? I'm sure there's like a bunch of things. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, you didn't put on this month budget consolidation. Oh, was okay. this you, Cheryl? Oh. Ah, uh, yeah, report out. I got that one. Okay. Budget consolidation. It's kind of minor, but <laughs> um, it was a Lakeview tradition to do a teacher appreciation breakfast every year. The school board would do the breakfast for the teachers at Lakeview. We used to do something. Too. And did you guys do? Mm -hmm. It would be nice to. Does Hardwick do something somewhere? Yeah. We did. When do we do? When do, when did that happen? Was cheese teacher appreciation week? Is that yeah, it? isn't that, that isn't yeah. there like a week from that? Each day includes the yeah. nice Jasper right. Hill cheese selection. Right. When is that week? Um, <laughs> it is May fourth. Okay. Yeah, okay. May. Okay, it's far away. Sorry. No, let's start well, talking about it in March because we, we, we only have two meetings until it happens. Yes, it will come up it, so fast. And it took some planning. Catherine, it wasn't hard, but it took a little planning. Have we contacted our lawyer yet about the oh, standard? No. And if so, what was the outcome of that? Well, they were going to get back to me when they knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, standard. Mm. I believe... Because they can't... I believe what I said was that we ought to contact the lawy our lawyer up front to find out what our legal obligations and responsibilities were. And I left that meeting with the understanding that we were going to contact our lawyer to have them look into... Yeah, Which meeting was that? And read back <coughs> the, the the one. Not the last one. Meetings, January seventh. Okay. Um, Adam, do you have any feelings about that, or uh, a lawyer we can talk to? So uh, I just need feelings. a description of. Uh, 
I think John John's aware of what they're trying to do. So right. Yeah. So I guess our question that we want to ask our lawyer is: Are we the OSS OSU uh, liable for any of that contract between Standard and Greens Greensboro? since the merger was forced on us by the state. It would seem to me that the state would be the one that would be the bearer of any financial considerations. And I had a discussion with Hardwick's rep, uh, Chip is it? Mm -hmm. Uh, the other day, and he said he was going to look into that um, at the legislator level okay. because it was a forced merger. So I guess if that can go to our lawyer, and maybe we can get an update in March on that. Okay. Um, standard bond. Standard bond. Something like that. I mean, it has to do with the bond on the Lakeview building. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Okay. I'm going to say that's it. If anybody has anything they'd come up with before March, we'll talk about it. Or email me. Um, okay, so we need to go into executive session. So is there a motion to go into executive session? For? Uh, for out of the personnel? Would it, yes, okay, for uh, matter, personnel matters. So moved. Seconded. Okay. And the uh, so to, principles.